What's up guys, welcome back. So my favorite mod that we've done to the 22 TRD Pro here on the channel has been my CBI front bumper. I love the look of it. I love the fact that we get the recovery points here in the front, the functionality. It's just an all around awesome bumper for this truck. We finally finished it up with a 13,000 13, pound rated winch. We went with the Zeke 13K Premium. Um, I'm gonna give you a look at that. We had a worn VR Evo 12S ordered, but unfortunately right now there's actually a, um, a recall on those winches, so we had to cancel that order. I'm actually kind of glad it happened though because I found this Zeke all of the reviews and videos I've seen on this thing are very positive and it was actually half the price of the worn so we're gonna put it to the test as well you know we'll, we'll, we'll have some videos here on the channel of that but by the end of this video what we're gonna cover is the install we're gonna give you a look at the clearances behind here there's been some confusion on the hybrids with the extra fans and stuff back there you know will it actually fit okay and blah 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 we're gonna give you a look at all that stuff wiring fitment clearances disconnect switch by the end of this video you're gonna know everything Thing you need to know if you want to get this installed on your own all right so let's take a quick look at the winch and we'll get right into the install all right here it is you can see it is the zeke 13,000 hp-n this has the synthetic rope on it which for me was kind of a must much safer there's obviously a lot of you know pros and cons with both but the synthetic is just a way to go in my opinion also has a wired and a wireless remote you could use it either way which was another kind of attractive feature on this thing so let's see what we got so we have our instructions and some paperwork here is the remote looks pretty good there you can see out and in um, wired wireless that's how you're going to switch which we'll go into more detail there's on the bottom is where you would plug the wiring harness to use it as a wired option we have some hardware some cables we are probably going to have to extend these cables which we'll cover doing the install with the hybrid the battery being up underneath the the rear seat nice heavy duty clevis pin man that thing is stout and of course you got your tag there with the with the zeke logo on it oh wow this i actually didn't even know came with it it's a disconnect which is awesome um not everybody installs these with their winch setup with their winch setup um I'm actually going to install it though. That's a pretty good feature, pretty good option. I didn't even know it actually came with that. So it's just a way to make sure the winch is not drawing any kind of phantom power when you're not using it. So we will be installing that for sure. And then here she is. So we have our fair lead here. Looks pretty good. I'm not sure if that's a decal or not. If it's a decal, I'm not going to lie. I'll probably take it off, make my own decal for right there. Heavy duty though, feels good. Here's the big boy, 13,000 pounds. Let's get it out of this box here. There she is. I can't wait to have some fun with this thing. You can see the synthetic rope in there. Comes with some protection on the first section or first part of the rope. Zeke, 13,000 pound. This side over here, we have the clutch, free spooler, and gauge. We may end up having to rotate that so the clutch is in the front. I'll show you why when we get into the install. Pretty cool on the back. They already have the connections made back here. So just makes wiring that much easier. And then of course, the look at everything else that we already kind of took a peek at and we'll cover. All right, let's get this thing on the truck. I cannot wait to take this thing off road. First step is we have to remove the front bumper and grill assembly, which is all one piece. I'm sure you guys know that on the 22 Tundras, we're gonna come underneath the fender flare. There's gonna be one, two, three, and four 10 millimeter bolts that you're gonna have to remove. Do that on the driver and passenger side. And if you have a TRD Pro like we do here, just be careful um, your running lights or your marker lights right here. There is a wiring harness, of course. So when you're popping the, after you take these four out and you pop the fender flare loose, don't pull out too far. There is some slack, but just be careful of that wiring harness behind the flare once you have those four removed just go ahead and pop your fender flare off of the truck trust me you're not breaking it and then again you have to reach back under in here and undo your wiring harness not much room to work but it's a small harness so it will come off pretty easily and you're just going to go ahead and repeat this on the driver's side as well the steps that i'm showing you right now now guys, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do the next one. So the fifth 10 millimeter bolt is right in this area here. I'm going to take that out as well. It'll just give the fender flare a little bit more play and a little bit more leeway to get it out of the way to take off the bumper. 
Then there's gonna be a couple 10 millimeter bolts up underneath here that just holds the fender liner to the bumper. Go ahead and remove those. Two more spots up underneath that we have to loosen up. If you guys installed your own CBI bumper, you'll know the two spots I'm talking about. If not, or if you're interested in doing your own install on this thing, check out my video here on the channel. It has been my most popular video on this truck by far. It's a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to get that bumper installed. Okay, but when you come up underneath, I'll show you there's gonna be one spot on the driver's side and one on the passenger side, right, right here. So what this piece does, this attaches the CBI bumper to this right here as part of the stock bumper. This bracket is the CBI bumper. It just links them together for extra stability. Okay, so go ahead and remove that. It's an 11 millimeter. There's a nut on the back, so you might need two 11s. Um, but go ahead and remove that. One on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. The whole bottom of the bumper will be free at that point. We'll go up top and get this thing popped off. All right, now we're up top. Before we go any further, I did disconnect the negative side of the battery. We're gonna be unplugging wiring harnesses, especially on these newer vehicles. Anytime I'm working around wiring harnesses or unplugging them, I always undo the battery or disconnect the battery just so we don't throw any codes or have to worry about it. So all we're gonna do is right here, un undo these two wiring harnesses, pop up that clip, this, this black pop clip right there. You just get a little, a little flathead screwdriver and pop it up. Same thing on the driver's side. Two more wiring harnesses, another pop clip. Then we're gonna do undo, I'm sorry, four 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, and four. Once we have that done, the bumper is now freed from the truck and I'll show you how to pop it off after all of that is um, loosened up. All right, bumper is free from the truck. So now we just have to get our hands up. This panel right in here, you wanna get get behind the, the fender flare and get your fingers in between the fender liner and this panel here. And you're just gonna kinda pop it straight out to you. And again, don't worry, you're not breaking it. So you can see that frees up this whole, this whole area right here. Same thing on the driver's side. Now, before you actually take it off of the truck, make sure you know where you're gonna set it down. Obviously, painted surfaces, you wanna put down something soft. I actually have a blanket behind the camera that I'm gonna lay it on um, so we don't get any scratches on it. It is now free to just basically pull straight off the truck. So I'm gonna get one hand down below and just basically pull straight out to me, like so, supporting it as I go across. If you have two people to do this, it's obviously much easier. now free from the truck. We'll go ahead and set this over here out of our way. So here you can see we have full access to our CBI bumper. Now, this piece here is a lower grill support. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. I don't think we're gonna be able to reuse it. Obviously, once we get, um, you know, going forward, I'm not gonna lie to you, we're gonna be kind of learning this together as far as fitment. This is gonna have to get out of the way at least to put the winch in there onto the tray back in here. We may have to move this piece here. I'm not exactly sure. So basically we're gonna start right here. In order to remove this lower grill support, it's only held on with four 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so just go ahead and remove those. All right, so I've done a lot of work off camera just to save time in the video. Fitment wise, just seeing what we would have to move, if anything, there was a lot of speculation with that on these hybrids because of the extra fans and everything. I gotta be honest guys, this winch actually fits really easily. So. I put everything back the way it is. This is exactly what you're gonna see stock. The only thing I have to move is this piece right here. So I'm just gonna slide it over and it's only gotta come over maybe about an inch, that's it. Everything else is actually going to work. The only thing I am gonna have to do, I will have to drill new mounting holes on the winch plate. The holes that are in here will not work um, with the hybrid just because um, the, the fans with this winch anyway. So I just, I just have to drill new mounting holes in the winch plate. That's no big deal at all. So I'm actually kind of shocked. The only thing I have to move is this piece right here and it's only held in by this 10 millimeter bolt. Um, and then I prob I will have to release the, the wiring, the, um, the wiring harness is um, attached to this black bracket here with the clip. So I will have to just pop that wiring harness out of there, which, that's easy to do, just get in the back and pop the clip loose so now you can see the wiring harness is free. So I'm gonna undo this 10 millimeter bolt 
and you can see this piece is now free. All I'm going to do is just slide it over. I'm, now I am going to just going to be careful with that there. I'm just going to drill a new hole um, about an inch over to the left. Everything else is going to fit perfectly fine when I drill my new mounting holes. And I've already had the grill back on. I put the wench up here, put it where I'm going to mount it. I had the grill back on, the whole front bumper back on. Everything fit extremely well. It's kind of tight, but there's no issues whatsoever. I'm actually shocked that we don't have to relocate anything else other than this piece right here. And when I say, I mean, this is so close to fitting. If I wanted to have my winch um, just slightly to the right, I can get away with leaving that piece right where it is, but I want my winch dead center, obviously. You want it to be centered in the truck. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill one simple hole, slide this over, screw it into, I don't know if you can see in the video, but this is the hole that it's screwed into um, that the bolt is going into. There's one right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw it into the left, the hole right here, but then because of the tab, I just have to make a hole right there for that tab to sit in. That's it, so that's all I'm gonna do. And uh, I'll drill my new mounting holes on the winch plate down here, which of course I'll give you a look at where we're gonna do that. We'll get it up on the truck and move on to the wiring. Let me get you up close to show you exactly what I did. So these are the two holes, these two to the right that it was in, okay? You can see the pin right there. That sat in this hole. And then of course the threaded hole is where the bolt went. This hole is already there. I'm not sure why, I, I really don't know, but it is already there. So I just drilled this hole right here, the fourth one over. So now all we're gonna do, pop it in like that, put the bolt in this other threaded hole. And I don't know if it's on camera right now, but this is why you have to release the wiring harness from this black bracket, um, just to give you that extra space or the extra wiggle room to shift this over. If you, I don't know if you can see, but you, it'll stress the wires too much if you don't release that pin, um, if th this pop pin from that black bracket. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that down there and uh, we'll get the new holes drilled in the winch plate. All right, guys, let me show you what I did to make sure to get my new holes drilled and make sure everything was dead center, straight in line, good to go. Um, so on the CBI bumper from CBI, you have these oval holes, one here, two, three, four. Those are already existing in the bumper. Can't use them on the hybrid because of these fans, they're too far back. So you have to come forward some. What I did to drill my new holes and make sure they were straight in line, perfectly center, so the winch is dead center when we mount it up, I used one of my woodworking squares. I actually used the longer one than this, but I'm gonna use a shorter one just to show you for demonstration purposes. All I did was I took my, again, it was longer, so it, it filled this gap more, but I lined it up. I lined the straight edge up with the edge of the two existing holes. Pretend, pretend these two holes aren't there yet, okay? I lined it up like this with the edge of that hole and the edge of this hole. So again, I have a nice straight line coming down and then I came down two and a half inches from the middle of this hole from CBI is this is my first hole in the front. Okay, so again, I had my nice straight line here. I came down two and a half inches from the center of the front CBI hole. Two and a half inches down is the, is the center of my first front hole. Okay, once I had that drilled, that was the first hole I put in there. Once I had that one drilled, it's four and a half inches center of the hole to center of the hole, that's where I drilled my next one, okay? So that, it, key, it makes sure you're straight in line and I already had the winch up there, everything lines up perfectly. I used a half inch drill bit, just so you know. Of course, I started smaller. You want, I think I started with an eighth, I think. I can't remember the smallest size I used, but I, I actually went up, I stepped up four times because you're going through, you know, this thick plate, it just makes it easier. But the big, the last hole I ended up drilling was a half inch, okay? So it's straight in line, perfectly centered, good to go. I came over, did the same thing on this side. Again, I already had the winch up there. The holes are lining up perfectly. If they're all off slightly, all you have to do is just take your drill bit and ream out the hole just a little bit. Um, that's not gonna hurt anything. Um, don't go too much, obviously. You don't want the bolt, the bolt to go right through. But if your holes are off just a touch, it's okay to ream these holes out a little bit. Um, this, These are the bolts from um, from the winch. So I just made sure you know that they fit down in there good. Um, obviously we're gonna be using washers and lock washers as well, but all right. So that's how I got my new holes, the locations figured out. Already had the winch up there, everything fits perfect. So let's get it mounted up and we'll move on to the wiring.
All right, guys, so I just ran into something interesting. Um, before you put the winch on, actually, good idea to mount your fair lead first because you're going to have to get back here to get at the nut to tighten it down just to give yourself a little extra room. But when I went to put the fair lead on, the bolts that they send in the kit for, from Zeke are not long enough. They don't, they're not long enough to go through the fair lead, through the bumper, and they have like maybe two or three threads sticking out on the backside. There's not even enough threads to use a single washer. You're supposed to use a flat washer and a locking washer. There's no way. You can't even use one of them. So that's very strange. Um, I'm get, this has to be a mistake. <laughs> Hopefully they don't send every kit like this. And I know they're the right bolts because in the instruct, like there's only two of these. It, they're the only bolts that it could be to mount the fair lead, but they're not long enough. So instead of having to deal with, I mean, I could put it on there, put the bolt through, and then just don't use any washers. I could put the nut back there, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and instead of having to take the front end back off, you know, instead of running the lows, grabbing longer ones and blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to use hardware that I have here at the house um, to mount this. It's kind of annoying to be honest, but thankfully I have a whole, I have a whole slew of loose hardware, nuts, bolts, washers, that whole, you know, the whole shebang. So that's all I'm going to do, but just a heads up. If you get this Z, comment down below. Let me know if you end up getting this winch. Let me know if you have the same problem, but yeah. The bolts they sent aren't long enough to put the fair lead on. But all you're simply going to do is go through the front, through the bumper, and then on the back side, put the nut on. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that using, exist, or using hardware that I have here at the house. So the other thing you want to do before you put the winch in is attach your grounding cable that's going to go to your battery. I almost forgot that because they have all the wiring done for you coming from the control box to the back of the winch. I almost forgot this um, because this does come separate. So all you're going to do is there's a grounding screw. I'll take a picture and put it on the screen, but it's all the way. You're looking at the back of the winch right now. It's all the way here on the right bottom corner. There's a skinny black. Let me take it off here and show you. This was already on there, but there's a skinnier black wire coming down from the control box. That's already on there. So just take the nut off, attach your thicker grounding cable and put the washer and the nut back on. Okay, so to mount it, you're gonna get two sets of hardware in the kit. You're gonna get four of the longer skinnier ones with the corresponding flat washers, um, locking washers, and the square nuts. And then you're gonna get two of the fatter set, okay? We're gonna be using the four of the longer skinnier ones. So what you have to do is, you have to take the square nuts and you can see the little square openings there's two here in the front and then two in the rear in the same spots but on the rear you have to take those square nuts put them in those slots like so and again do the two in the rear then when we sit the winch down we're going to take the longer skinnier bolts you go locking washer flat washer we're going to go up through the winch plate and screw into those square um, those square nuts. There's holes in the bottom uh, of the winch there that you have to come up through. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the biggest pain as, as with this install, just because your holes have to line up really good to get these up and into the, the, the area to screw into these square nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the winch on the plate and we'll bolt these up into the, uh, to secure it onto the plate. Okay, so she is mounted, everything is tightened down, we are good to go. Um, I actually have to call it a night, so we're gonna do the wiring tomorrow. So all we're gonna do to secure the, um, the rope, we're gonna take the clevis and take the pin, and this is pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna pin the hook to the end of the rope here, take your cotter pin, put it through the hole on the other side, and then don't forget to bend the legs of the cotter pin so it doesn't pop back out on you. So just bend it over to the side here a little bit. Like so, so you can see now it, it can't slide out on you. And then we're just gonna attach it to our tow hook. We're gonna put our bumper back on for tonight and we will pick back up with you guys tomorrow and uh, we'll get the wiring done and give this thing a test. 
All right, here we are three days later, actually. Life gets in the way. So let's get this thing finished up, get the wiring done. Really quick look at how it fits in there before we do that. So you can see we have plenty of clearance in the front. Sides are good. The hosing um, behind there, no pinching or anything. Down in here, plenty of wiggle room. It's not getting pinched, pushed, anything like that. So again, as I mentioned, I'm kind of shocked at how well this thing fits. That is the only piece we had to slide over and we couldn't put that lower grill support back on that we originally took off. And I had a little senior moment don't mind me i'm gonna be 42 on monday so um but that when i said that hole i wasn't sure why that that other threaded hole was there that was be that was for that lower grill support so don't mind me i'm getting old mine's not as sharp as it used to be but let's get this thing wired up all right let me show you guys where we're at and when we're all done i am going to give you a very good look at how all of the cables are routed where i ran them and all that good stuff so just bear with me but i just want to show you what we're doing so far so I have the positive and negative coming off the back of the winch up here in the engine bay. I fed them up through, and again, I'll give you a closer look. Um, but because our battery is underneath the rear seat inside the truck on this hybrid, it drives me crazy. I've mentioned it in my previous videos that we have to run wiring to, but anyway, we do have to extend them. So you can see right here, we picked up some positive and negative. It's two gauge wiring. I will put a link to all this stuff down below. Um, you have to get these two gauge butt connectors and all that good stuff i'll put a link to these as well like i said everything i'm using will be linked down below but i like these they came in a, i think it was a 10 pack or an 8 pack something like that but they also come with heat shrink tubing that has the adhesive inside so it'll be nice and protected nice and weatherproof and we won't have any concerns now as far as my disconnect switch that's another thing i kind of went back and forth i wasn't sure where i really wanted to put that there's not a whole lot of room to put this by the battery again you're dealing with such limited space I'm going to mount my disconnect right here underneath the hood. That's up to you. This is just the route I'm going with. Easy access. If I ever get stuck or I need to use the winch or whatever, I'm going to have to access the winch anyway to engage the clutch. I should be able to get at this pretty easily. Just pop the hood, turn it on. That's what we're going to go with. So what all we're going to do right now, you can see we have um, the, the end of the, the positive coming up from the winch. I'm just going to put on. Now, I actually cut this end did have a um a ring terminal on it but again i was messing around i wasn't sure what i was going to do i ended up cutting that off so i do have to put a new one on so i'm just going to go ahead and attach a new ring terminal i'm going to use a little heat shrink tubing over the connection make sure it's nice and protected so we're going to take that ring terminal attach it to you can see the back side of the disconnect switch. I have the sides and the bottom off. They just slide off um, until you're ready to get everything connected there. So we're just gonna slide it on to that side of the ring terminal. I'm gonna have it sitting in this orientation um, because the way the knob turns, I, I wanna be able to access it and turn it this way. So again, totally up to you, um, but we're just gonna take the ring terminal to one stud, put the washer back on and the nut back on. All right, so you can see we have the winch cable coming up with the um, ring terminal connected to one side. Off the other side, or the other stud of the disconnect switch, is the two gauge cable that we had to purchase to extend this wiring. So the disconnect switch is now done. I'm just gonna set it aside. We'll just have to mount it, of course. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, the negative, the black coming up from the winch right here. We just used one of those two gauge um, butt connectors stripped back some wire from the winch cable and then the cable that we purchased to extend it to extend the wiring put each end into that buck connector crimped it down and used that weatherproof heat shrink okay so now we have our wires extended now we have to feed them into the truck and back to the battery okay guys wiring is done i cannot wait to fire this thing up so let me give you a good look at how all of the cables are routed um it's honestly pretty easy to do so you can see we have the red and black coming across on the back of the winch and i'll give you a really good look at how we have it there there's plenty of slack plenty of play everywhere i made sure no other hoses were you know being affected or anything like that you can see how we ran it up behind this piece here there's nothing sharp you have to worry about Okay, and then I mean, you're not gonna be able to, let me see if we can look, get a view from up top here. Um, right down, you can't really see them there, but you could see where they pop out right there. Okay, so there's a channel that you can run down through there. I just used my wire fish and fed it through there. Um, and then of course they pop out underneath this piece here. 
come running over here. What I may do, I may actually take my intake box out and run them underneath because this right here is part of the intake. So I might actually take the box out and run them underneath that piece. I gave myself, you can see I have some slack in the red cable. Reason being is if I ever need to, you can see how we have the, the battery or the disconnect switch mounted to the top of the um, fuse panel box. Um, if I ever have to take that box off, I have plenty of slack in that red cable so I could take the cover off and not have to worry about anything there. Okay, so let's get you a look down in here. You can see now I am also gonna come back and put wire loom. I ran out of wire loom big enough for these two gauge cables. So you're not gonna see this red wiring. It's gonna be under black wire loom um, just to make it you know look a little bit neater. But you can see the black and the red go down through there. And I'm sure you know where it's going right down through that, the grommet down, down in there. Okay, that leads us into the engine. Uh, I'm sorry, into the cabin from the engine bay. And let's take you inside the truck and we'll show you where it pops out and back to the battery. Okay, so we're by the driver's seat. If you come up, it just pops out that one grommet right up there that we have all of our wiring coming through from the engine bay into the inside. I just made, I used my utility knife and very carefully made a slit in that rubber grommet just big enough to fit those two two gauge wires through. Um, you don't want to make it too big. I made it just big enough so it was kind of snug pulling them through there, but that's how I wanted it so there's no gaps or anything. Okay, and then it's pretty self-explanatory. You just run it just like any other wiring we've ever done on this channel. <laughs> we just popped out the, um, the kick panel, the door sills, they just pop up, ran it back through. So here we are in the back seat. You just feed it underneath that panel there you can see the red and black now these are obviously bulkier cables being two gauge you know just be very careful when you're feeding them through there i got them through honestly with no trouble i didn't have to use any kind of um you know i know some people use you know a little bit of dish soap or whatever to try to snake to snake them through if you're having trouble i did not have to do that it's a snug fit but they came through perfectly fine no issues and you can see where i tucked them where i put them or tucked them up underneath this panel here. I did it in two different locations. The red is right there, the black is right there. Because they are so bulky, I didn't want them in the same, you know, the same tight little area because I didn't want it to affect this panel, um, you know, make the panel pop up or bulge or anything. So that's why we have them entering in two different spots. And when I went underneath this, you can see, hopefully you can see right in there, there's like a, there's like a padding um, on top of the, the truck in between the truck and the plastic. I have the wiring on top of that padding. I didn't want it up against the metal in case there was anything sharp underneath there or sharp edges or anything. There shouldn't be, but just in case, I do have the wiring on top of that padding. Um, and there, there's, you could, I don't know if I could show you what I'll get my hand in the way, but there's plenty of play. Like it's not like really, really tight or pushing down on it too hard. Um, it's snug, but it's not too snug. Okay, so then you can see right up in here, black red we're just going to make our final connections to the battery before i do that i want to put the front of the truck back together so that's what i'm going to do at this point i'm going to get everything back in those sensors in the back or i'm sorry the sensors in the front in the engine bay plugged back in and then we'll reconnect our battery just so we don't have to worry about any codes or anything so that's why we haven't connected yet let me put the front of the truck back together i cannot wait to fire this winch up i'm going to go do that now and we will give this thing a shot all right guys, let's check out this remote, make sure everything is wired up correctly and working properly. Um, I apologize for the wind noise if it's bad in the microphone. Of course, anytime I wanna do some outside recording, the weather sucks. Um, so disconnect switch, we're gonna have to turn that on, obviously when you're not using the winch. This is the, the perks of having the switch. We're just gonna go ahead and turn that on. Keep it off when you're not using the winch. We're gonna come down here. You want the truck running, before I go any further, I do wanna mention that whenever you're winching, you want the truck running for the battery. So we're going to come down to the clutch, turn it to free spool. That'll allow us to pull some synthetic rope out. And we're only going to be just testing this to make sure it's working today. Um, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell. I am going to show you what you need to do before you actually use this in the field or on the trails. Um, so right now we're just testing it just to make sure it works. We're going to just pull out some rope here. You can see it has the, um, the rope guard on the front of it. Now, I'll show you the wire. Wired is self-explanatory. You're just gonna plug it into right here on the winch. You just take that cap off, nice weatherproof cap there. You, there's only one spot to plug it in. And there's a white mark and a white mark. 
I don't know if you can see the white mark on the winch itself right there. I'll take a picture and put it on your screen. You just line up those two white marks, plug it in. The switch on the side of it, that's for the wireless part. So that's off right now. On the remote, you can see this is the one thing I did notice. It's backwards, the lighting. So it says it's in wireless, but it's actually not. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's backwards on this remote. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. One other thing, we need to re-engage the clutch. So we have it in the free spool, spin it back to engaged. And then on the remote, you're just simply gonna pull, push in. All right, so everything is working properly there. Now to use the wireless feature, let me show you what we have to do there. Okay, to use the wireless, we're just gonna unplug the remote and then the switch on the side which again i'll take a picture and put it on the screen for you but we're just going to flip that to the on position that's for the wireless option okay so that's flipped to on then on the remote this middle button here you have to push and hold that until you see again these are backwards it's saying that the wired is now active but again it's backwards on this remote for some reason i don't know why but you can clearly see the remote is not plugged in and let's make sure it works I'm going to pull out. And I'm not pulling it. That's actually by the remote. So the remote is working properly other than the lights being reversed. So there you can see, I just kind of made sure it's nice and tight. You don't want to really crank it up against the fair lead, but it's nice and snug there. Um, we don't have to worry about the rope coming undone. As I mentioned, make sure you're subscribed. Um, turn on that bell. I will show you what you need to do. You need to pre-tension or pre-stretch these ropes, whether it's cable, or whether it's synthetic or not, it doesn't matter. You do have to do that before you actually use the winch on the trails or you're running a high risk of damaging the rope. All right, stay tuned. If you guys have any questions, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this outro kind of quick because it's freezing and the wind is blowing. I'm hoping this audio turns out all right for you. But any questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. We'll get them addressed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.